Hello Minecrafters! In an earlier video about filtering mechanics for experience orbs and unstackable items, I showed how to make a filter that you can attach to a water stream, which pulls out and destroys the unstackables, returns stackables to the stream, and allows experience orbs to pass over. In this video, I'm going to show two enhancements, how to save potions along with stackable items, and how to increase the capacity in terms of items per hour of a single filter module. I will be using an add-on I made to be able to see XP orbs moving in flowing water. In vanilla Minecraft, the orbs desync when they touch flowing water, so you cannot see them move visually. The game still has them moving internally though, so the builds I'm showing do work in vanilla. If you want to learn more about this or get the add-on, I have another short video which is linked in the description. I'm also using a directional dropper pack that I made. It puts arrows on the side of the droppers so that you can see more clearly which direction they are pushing items. It does have a limitation. The back side is never correct uh, because of hard-coded limitations to how we can modify block textures. It is accurate for the sides though, whether the droppers are horizontal or vertical. Here is the block palette I will be using for the demo builds. Polished andesite is for blocks that get powered or must be solid. Glass is for blocks that must not be powerable but can support redstone components. Snow is for blocks that can be anything that supports what's on top of it. I'm also using barrier blocks around the water streams to make the circuits easier to see. Now for the filters. This is the original water stream unstackable filter that I designed. Experience orbs pass over the slab here, and items gets processed through these hoppers and droppers. The key to the design is that it uses a single comparator to do three things. Run the unstackable filter, lock the input hopper line to make sure no items get out of order or misfiltered, and automatically activate the return droppers like a clock circuit. Because of the way the locking and clocking mechanism works, this filter runs at two-thirds hopper speed, or in other words it can process up to 6,000 items per hour. You can make it more compact by replacing the output side redstone with a single observer. In the original design I thought it would be important not to hard power the droppers so that they would not disrupt the hopper timing. That's actually not a problem, and the observer works fine here. Now for upgrades. I'll start with speed. Here is a version that runs at full hopper speed or 9000 items per hour. This version is faster because it does not lock the input hopper. It does not need to because the filter hopper pulls items downward instead of having them pushed in by another hopper. Hoppers push before they pull, so it will never pull in a second item before it pushes out the first. And I want to give credit, I came to understand the reliability of vertical hopper transfer by looking at the bulk unstackable separators made by Grass and H. Richhart. To see the difference between the old filter and the new, faster one, let's start by looking at the droppers and hoppers from the backside. On the right is the old filter. You can see that in the middle of the horizontal hopper transfer there is where the locking takes place. And of course the filtering as well. On the new filter here on the left, we have a single column of hoppers, and uh, they feed into droppers that take the items forward and then up, or forward into the lava cauldron. If we swing around here to the front, we can now look at the redstone, which is actually simpler in a way. The comparator feed, uh, reads the middle hopper, and then we don't need the locking circuit, so we just have the um, unstackable filter with the three redstone dust and the torch next to the hopper there on that side. And then coming out the other side, we have a simple auto dropper circuit with the repeater. Um, the dust in front of the observer activates that, and then the observer powers the three droppers because it hard powers the middle one. The dropper on the bottom that pushes unstackables into the lava cauldron gets powered by this andesite block here under the dust as part of the auto dropper circuit. Now we can run a comparison between the old filter and the new one, and we'll see that even though I push the button on the old one first, the new one will finish filtering these items. Um, for all these tests, I have three diamond helmets, three potions, and then four stacks of 16 each of random items that are getting filtered. There, the new filter is finished up, and the old one is still going, because it's a third slower. 
I also have a double hopper speed version of the filter, which processes up to 18,000 items per hour. It is essentially two of the single speed hoppers set side by side. It is slightly more expensive than two single speed hoppers though, so I'd only recommend using it where you need to process more than 9,000 items per hour in a single spot. The key to getting this to work is the input hoppers. Let me swing around here and show you these input hoppers are set facing each other so that as items come in they get evenly distributed between the two sides and then each side is able to filter up to 9,000 but because they get evenly distributed no matter how many items or how fast you're putting them in they're always going to be put through at the same double hopper speed rate. Now the hoppers and droppers on these two side-by-side -side filters are almost exactly the same. On the front side we've got the three hoppers and the four droppers but on the back side we've replaced the um, middle transfer dropper here with a hopper uh, because it is more challenging to power that block, so it's just easier to use a hopper there. Um, each filter has its own output at the top here, next to each other like this, and that's just because it's, uh, the filters don't run on exactly the same tick uh, because of how they distribute items, and so it's um, not reliable to try to push everything through a single output dropper. So we um, just need to set the water stream to start to the side here, and I'm just using an up, upside down stair so that I don't have to build other blocks around so everything's visible. But you can just put other blocks around there if you wish, and uh, the items will be directed by the way this water is laid out. The redstone on the first side is exactly like the single speed filter over there. And however, because the observer hard powers this dropper, the um, backside redstone needs to be different so that we don't end up with this dropper being permanently activated and therefore not able to transfer anything. So on this side we don't have an observer um, powering that dropper and instead we run a redstone line up to the target block here to activate the output dropper. This dropper of course is powered by the, the first side observer and then the dropper underneath is still powered by this redstone dust coming top, back on top of this andesite block. So um, it's easier just to keep the hopper here, as I said before, so we don't have to power that. And here's what this one looks like running. You can see it runs through those 70 items much faster. You can modify either the single speed or the double speed filter to save potions along with stackable items and I'm going to show you now how to do that. So starting with the hoppers and droppers, on the single speed filter what we want to do is have the um, unstackable output dropper point into a brewing stand instead of into a lava cauldron. Then we've got a hopper under the brewing stand as well as a hopper under that dropper so if items are potions and they can go in the brewing stand they'll go this way and if they're not they will go that way and into a lava cauldron down here. And in order to make sure that they go the right direction we split the filter signal from the comparator there like this so we've got the um, part that keeps the this hopper locked is um, on top and then underneath that we send another line to uh, deactivate this torch so that whenever the, uh, this hopper unlocks and sends an item through, then the hopper under that dropper will get locked uh, to give this dropper time to attempt to put it into the brewing stand. And then on the next redstone tick, it will, this hopper will unlock so that if the item did not go in the brewing stand, it'll go down here and toward the lava cauldron. If the item goes into the brewing stand, it comes over here and another signal that um, is delayed off of this torch here will come up and power these two droppers, sending the potion upward. And then this dropper here gets powered by the observer from the primary uh, clock circuit, goes back into the output line and into the water stream. So to see that in operation, it works like this. And you can see the potions are getting sent up with the uh, stackable drops. 
Over here on the double hopper speed filter, I decided it was best to actually make a separate dedicated potion filter down here at the bottom. So the way this one works is the um, unstackable output from the two uh, filtering units at the top goes into these two droppers and from this one on the left it goes into the one on the right so then we have a single hopper feeding into a potion filter. Now I've um, made another copy of the potion filter over here to the right just so, to show how this works. So um, unstackables come in here uh, then as soon as they come into this hopper uh, this um, filtering circuit will lock the input hopper so you're only dealing with one at a time and the uh, hopper underneath that hopper is normally locked until um, an item until after this hopper has a chance to try to put the item into the brewing stand. Both this repeater under here and this repeater out here are on a two tick delay to give these hoppers enough time to try to put the potion into the brewing stand and then if it won't go into the brewing stand it comes down and into this dropper that's um, conveniently underneath the comparator and that dropper whenever an item um, comes through this will function like a clock this circuit or this um, line down here will go on and off and that dropper will then eject the item into a lava cauldron and over on the potion side potions will immediately get pulled down by this hopper and put into a dropper over here uh, for output um, oh and I forgot a piece of dust this uh, as this filter clocks um, this will also activate the dropper to send the hopper up and out now in the actual filter this dropper line goes up back and forms another output so you actually have three dropper outputs and again uh, that's just because if you start sending um, multiple sources of items into one of the droppers then it, it'll get backed up so each part of this needs its own output and this redstone dust from the dedicated potion filter at the bottom is enough to power these three droppers and the this dropper uh, gets powered by the observer hard powering the one next to it and then this dropper for outputting the potions gets powered by the same target block that powers the secondary item filter. Um, the only change at the top level is this block here it needs to be glass so that the torch from the potion filtering unit doesn't um, mess up the, the timing on the primary unstackable filter. Oh and this block here also needs to be glass so that we don't fire items out of this dropper because now we're allowing the hopper to pull them into the potion filter rather than firing them directly into a lava cauldron or into um, another container. So this one will run like this and you can see all the items coming through quite quickly. So there's the updated water stream unstackable item filters. I hope you find them useful in your worlds.